no. Sun is bad, man. So, am I recording? I'm actually recording and I've got audio. So, um, hi everyone. I'm at the Gallagher State. No, I'm not. Hi everyone, I'm at the Gallagher Convention Center at the caravan show and I thought I was here earlier than usual but guess what, I'm not. Now a person can see that there is a steady stream of people coming in and I think it's going to be quite busy if I judge from my previous video it is going to be busy. Now I just want to say up front none of these exhibitors has paid me any money to give them airtime if we can call it that. So if I give some preferential treatment over others it is purely coincidental right they're standing and waiting for me so I think we better go in otherwise I'll have to pay myself <laughs> Maybe mist. But it's raining here by you. 500 bucks, you plug it into your tap at home, you've got a beautiful, nice uh, cooling system at home. I have made my way to the top floor and I'm looking down in hall one and I'm going to start here in front by bush larpa and work my way to the back and then down the back to the other end and then I'll go up the other end and then work my way through the middle let's go Morning, Aubrey here from Garmin. Just some information on new products that we've got and that we've recently launched and uh, current products on the market as well. So with relevance to the overlanding in the 4x4 market, we've recently brought out overlanding products. It's called Tread Overlander and Tread Overlander XL. The differences there is the 8 inch screen versus 10 inch screen. So nice big display. You'll always be able to see all mapping relevant to where you're traveling and around you as well. And the nice thing about the Tread Overlander is we've incorporated the inReach technology. From a safety perspective, inReach is first to market and it's very viable to the 4x4 market. So in short, it uses Iridium satellite for communication and then you've got GPS for location. So you've always got where you're going and where you're traveling to. And because Iridium is 100% coverage, you'll always be able to have communication anywhere, irrespective of whether you have cell phone reception or not. It does work on a subscri subscription base and there's safety features and an SOS functionality where you, whether you come into a situation where you need assistance, just trigger the SOS button and you'll be linked through to Geos, which will give you professional assistance via messaging asking whether you need ambulance assistance or security assistance irrespective of your, your current situation. There's also the automotive segment. So there's always been the question in the market whether automotive units have any re relevance with tablets coming out and cell phones coming out and 
a lot of vehicles having onboard navigation. So with regards to the statement around tablets and cell phones, we still believe that there's a very big relevance in the market around uh, automotive units in that if you're using a mobile device you don't always have cell phone reception so when you run out of cell phone re reception you don't have any more mapping so if you're in that situation you, you have the potential of getting lost whether you're using whenever you're using a cell phone for navigation if you're receiving a phone call if you're receiving messages one it's distracting and it's not really legal to drive around with your cell phone in your hand but two all of those applications then run to the background so you've got the potential or the possibility of missing turnoffs because now the applications are running in the background there's still a relevance in the market and there's still a customer base that believe in having an automotive device or a navigation device for that particular purpose There's the most brightest, there's off, there's a dimmer, a bit more on this, and you can move it around. Reading light. Oh. The nice thing about this thing, you've got three windows, two on the sides and one on the back. You've got your mosquito net, your gauze on the outside, that keeps your bags at bay and your mosquitoes outside, but it still allows you for wind and air to flow through, you've got a nice draft. So if you're sleeping and it's hot, you can leave the solid open, there's a nice breeze coming in. So as it gets a bit more chilly, you can close the solid, you can start pulling it up, but you don't need to close it all the way, you can leave it like that. Later on it's cooling down a bit more, and then you can go all the way up, until you close it all the way.
Now that concludes my walk through hall one. And that brought us to more or less lunchtime. And I think I'm going to go and get something to eat. Now for some reason, everybody comes to the first restaurant or the main restaurant. And very few people, or that's the way it seems, knows about uh, the restaurant if you go down the escalator. So, if you go through the interconnecting section that connects all one with all two, you will find an escalator. And if you go down that escalator, you will find a restaurant that is reasonably quiet compared to the other one until now. Well, I'm going to quickly have a meal and I will see you just after this. Welcome back. After a nice lunch, it's time to do Hall 2. Now, Hall 2 consists of a few big stalls and a whole lot of smaller ones. So what I'm going to do in this case, I'm going to do the front part over here and then move around to the back and then come around back to the front here from behind. Here we go.